nails myself and they went like okay until I got to this one and somehow managed to like fuck it up so badly that it's like on sideways now I can't get it off so we're, we're working on that one I'm mainly gonna be working on bloodless ties today I do have a client project that I'm also in the middle of so we'll get a little bit of work done on that we're getting so close to I gotta stop holding this up we're getting really close to my deadline for bloodless ties it needs to go to my final proofreader on October 10th so we are officially down to the final draft I am line editing copy editing myself as you guys saw in the little intro montage, I made a tracker in my journal for it. So you can see um, I've already done chapter nine. Kind of a random one. Um, I like to do these out of order so I don't get super swept up in the story. So I've actually just been using a random number generator that I Googled and like letting it choose whatever chapter we're gonna work on next. So right now I'm working on chapter 13. I actually think it's pretty much done, but I was working on it when I was sitting somewhere while I was having lunch. So I like to like read it aloud as the last step to make sure it's good. So we just need to do that and then we'll move on to a new chapter today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie. I'm an author and an editor. I have seven books out currently. We're currently working on Bloodless Ties, which is the third book in my Marionette series. It releases on November 15th. Is there anything else to update you on? I don't think so. We, the Kickstarter for the Bloodless Ties audiobook ended. We met the goal, so I'm really excited about that that we hit a ton of new review milestones for the giveaways i've been drawing those over on my monday morning coffee chat lives on my second channel thank you guys so much um check your email if you entered to win the giveaway i'm still waiting to hear back from two people to get their address so i can ship them out if you want more info on the giveaways that's down below oh also oh my gosh i cannot forget to say this i have the order form for signed copies officially open now so that includes any of my previous books that includes the hardcovers for wicked souls because we've never done signed copies of those and then that's also how you can pre-order a signed paperback of bloodless ties and then also a signed hardcover of bloodless ties as always the bloodless ties hardcover is going to have bonus content in it all of the hardcovers have bonus content in them so if you want to pre-order a signed copy this is the only way to do it only way as in I have it open for a certain window. I'll open it again eventually, but you never know when that's gonna be. So I never know when that's gonna be. If you wanna pre-order a signed copy of Bloods and Ties, that's the place to do it. And you can also order other signed copies if you would like. Also, cause I know I haven't been the best about having these signed copies open lately with my move and everything. If you're thinking like, oh my God, Katie, I already bought the hardcover of Wicked Souls. I don't wanna buy another one to have it signed or something. If you're ordering something else, like you're pre-ordering Bloods Ties or something and you have another book of mine, you already bought so you don't want to like buy it again um if you want to like include that as a note in your order i'll send you a signed book plate for those books for free so if you have books of mine that are not signed and you just want like a book plate for them feel free to just like make that as a note in your order and i'll send some extras along if you want them i think that's it as far as announcements go this video is being sponsored by anna louisa so huge shout out to them anna louisa is a jewelry company that i've worked with several times in the past and they make like if you see me wearing a piece of jewelry in the majority of my videos 
they're from them all of my everyday pieces are from them and they have such a cute new collection out right now highly recommend checking them out not only do i love the designs of the jewelry but i also love how their main focus is on sustainability they offer high quality jewelry but without having negative impacts on the planet they're always my go-to place for rings and earrings but they also have necklaces bracelets that kind of stuff i don't know how well you can tell these little hoops are snakes i'm obsessed with them but then also my little star and moon hoops are from them but my most recent favorite thing that i've gotten from them is this mood ring there's also a matching mood ring mood necklace i'm loving the 90s trends coming back and i was all about the mood rings when i was a kid and this one is not like the standard one it's like it's cute right I love it. If you want to check them out, would highly recommend. I'll have the link down below in the description. Their pieces start at $39. And if you use my code CASEBOOKDATE10, that will get you an extra 10% off. If you do end up picking up something from them, I would love to hear about it. If you want to like post about it and tag me in it so I can see what you chose. Always love saying that. Especially when people buy the same pieces that I have that we're like matching. Back into the rest of the vlog. I've been trying to do the math on exactly how much time I have <laughs> before it goes to the proofreader. Okay, so we have 23 days, including today. We've got far more than 23 chapters to do. So I feel like if we average like two chapters a day at least, then it'll be fine, which is doable. Some chapters are longer than others, so there are definitely some days when I can knock out far more than two chapters. I am so impatient for this book to be done. I am so ready for you guys to read it. I am like dying to see reactions to this book. I'm looking for my blue light glasses. Everything's a mess. I'm always excited for my book releases and I'm always excited to see people's reactions, but genuinely, this is the one I'm the most excited about. I am dying to see how people react to this one because I feel like it's going to be a mixed bag. I don't think everybody's going to feel the same way about this book. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I also really, really want to spoil everything. Our current word count, we're sitting at 114,354 words. It's not as long as I thought it would be though. I imported the document into Vellum yesterday to just like see how long the book was gonna be formatted. I need to give my cover designer an estimate so she can tweak the cover file um, because we just like estimated at the same size as book two when she made the cover because I had no idea how long this book was gonna be. And long story short, if you wanna set up the pre-order for paperbacks through Ingram Spark, you have to have a cover file, which means you have to have some kind of estimate for the page count. So anyway, I was thinking this book was gonna be like well over 500 pages with the physical copy, but if I keep the formatting all the same as the previous books in the series with like the front matter and the back matter and stuff, I think it's gonna be just under 500 pages, maybe like 475 or something like that. And then the hardcover with the bonus content will probably be closer to 500 pages. So still a long one, but I was expecting it to be worse than that, <laughs> which is good from the side of like the cost of printing the book, the longer the book is, the more expensive it is to print. So I've gotten questions in the past on like how I price my paperbacks and stuff. And if you've noticed the paperback for Bloodless Ties on Amazon is a dollar more expensive than the previous two paperbacks because I knew this was gonna be so long that the print cost was gonna be more. So I had to up the price, otherwise my royalty was gonna be. You know. But I've gotten asked before, like, why are your paperbacks more expensive than like traditionally published books? Because traditional publishing, they have these big printers, they print in bulk so they can get their costs down. I have to price my paperbacks the way that I do in order to make any kind of profit on them. And especially with the paper shortage and stuff with the coronavirus, the cost of printing has gone up. So I recognize that my paperbacks are more expensive than traditionally published books, but it's not just because I'm trying to make like $10 per sale or something. It's literally, I make like two or $3 per sale with my books. I have to price them that way because of the cost to print them. So in case you were wondering, we're going to get back to work. I want to finish chapter 13 today and then we'll let the random number generator decide where we go next. <music> officially chosen the release date for Marionette's book four. I like to choose the release date for the next book before the most recent one comes out so I can have the pre-order ready. So if you grab book three on release day, finish it really fast and then want to pre-order book four right after, you have that option available to you. So I can link 
the pre-order in the back of the book. So I have until November to finalize it, but you know, I have a lot of factors to consider when choosing a release date. There's how long I need to write the book. I don't want to rush myself. I want to make sure the book is, you know, the best quality it can possibly be. I also don't want to make my readers wait a really long time and I promised that the turnaround time between three and four was going to be faster than two and three, which is still the case. But then also like, I have to consider what time of year is it? Is it releasing around a holiday? Is it releasing around back to school time? Is it releasing when people are busy and not really reading? Is it releasing in like the time of year that I want it to release for like the vibes? So all of these things considered, I think I've pretty much decided that I want to release Ruthless Ends on the first day of fall for 2023 which I googled and it should be Friday, September 22nd, which is a shorter turnaround time <laughs> um, than the previous one, but not by much. I think it's like a month faster than this time because the last time was December to November and now it's gonna be November to September. So it's still a decent wait, but I do think I'm gonna need that much time. But I like the idea of releasing it on the first day of fall. I feel like this series is a very like fall spooky vibes kind of thing. And I didn't wanna release it in October because I think October is like the best time to read it. But if you wanna like make a fall TBR, I feel like it's best to release the book a little bit like ahead of time. So, cause people like to start reading for fall in like September and stuff. So I feel like releasing this book on the first day of fall, I just really like the sound of that and I just feel like it's fitting. It gives me enough time, I think, to get the book done without like rushing it and feeling super stressed about it. And that comes out almost exactly 10 months after Bloodless Ties, which is kind of my average for books um, from sitting down to start the rough draft to it coming out. Um, I was talking about this, I think in a Patreon video for the anti-relationship year from sitting down to write it to releasing it was about nine months. From sitting down to write the marionettes to releasing book one, it was about nine months or maybe it was 10 months. No, it was nine months. So nine to 10 months I know is doable for myself. I've done it several times before. It's a little more complicated with these longer later books in a series because there's a lot more to do than a standalone book. But giving myself 10 months, if I give myself that deadline also, it's helpful for me to manage my time in order to reach that deadline. So tentatively, September 22nd is my plan. <laughs> about what I'm currently reading anymore, but this book was actually recommended to me by one of you like a while ago, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So whoever you are, thank you so much for recommending this book to me. Um, I'm currently reading Period Power, so would recommend if you are a person with a period. It talks about the different parts of your cycle, um, what kinds of work are optimal in those different stages and things like that. And I've been personally like really getting into like cycle syncing and like trying to organize my work in such a way where I am giving myself my best chance. <laughs> like I know I'll be better at this kind of work during this time of the month and stuff like that. So I really feel like it's helped improve my mood, it's helped improve my productivity and just like overall quality of life. Um, I've been doing this for a while now and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so if you kind of want like an intro to all of that stuff, totally off topic from like everything else, would recommend. <music> Thank you.